from as early as 1921, Taisho Year 10, until passing away in 1972, Showa Year 47, Takamatsu Tochitsugo Sensei, dedicated more than 50 years of his life to one purpose. Finding, training, and watching over a successor or successors to the martial arts Ruha traditions Takamatsu Sensei had mastered. Kōkeisha. This Japanese word can be translated into English in two ways, inheritor or successor. Traditionally, a child or other relative is naturally the person to inherit the family Ruha grandmasterships. For example, in the case of my teacher, Grandmaster Shoto Tanimura, After great efforts and much forethought, Soke's family now possesses more than one member who has already mastered these Takamatsu Den martial arts. One example is Tanimura Sensei's son, Hanshi Kotaro Tanimura. Conversely, Takamatsu Sensei and his wife had no biological children. Therefore, the mission to ensure the correct transmission of these Ruha schools after his death would lead to a very long and difficult process. Interestingly, the commonly used English words successor as well as success both come from the same Latin root. In short, According to the original meaning of these terms, one cannot have true success in life without first training competent successors to carry on your achievements. For Grandmaster Takamatsu, the obvious next generation was not fated to be born from within his own family. Even so, in his quest of over 50 years, Takamatsu Sensei was eventually successful. Also, the master did actually manage to preserve his life's work in an unprecedented way. The stories and information in this video will explain just how this was achieved. Hello. And welcome, these are dedicated to shining a new light on the life of Takamatsu Tochitsuko Sensei and sharing exciting details from Grandmaster Shoto Tanimura's new book series called Takamatsu's True Martial Arts Legacy, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. My name is Michael Coleman and my title is Kiyoshi. I've been a student under Tanimura Soke since 1987. These videos will offer many of the exclusive insights I've learned from Soke. Plus, they'll highlight never before published facts and martial arts legacy passed down to us by Grandmaster Tochitsugo Takamatsu. Part 7 of 8 A Timeline of Important Events in Takamatsu Sensei's Life Before World War II In 1908, Takamatsu Sensei received Minkyo Gaiden for Shintun Turoju. <laughs> Kotoru and Togakuriju
from Toda Shinrukin Sensei. Ishitani Sensei passes away in Meiji, year 42, on November 29th. In 1912, Takamatsu Sensei first goes to Tianjin, China. More information is available in video number three of this series. Unfortunately, while Takamatsu Sensei was in China, Toto Sensei passed away in Taisho, year two, at the age of 83 or 84. In 1914, Takamatsu Sensei establishes a Japanese martial arts federation in China called Nihon Seinen Utokukai. In 1917, a young Kimura sensei meets Grandmaster Takamatsu for the first time while the master was on a brief visit back in Japan. By 1919, Takamatsu sensei returns from living in China for good. That same year, Kimura sensei officially becomes a student of Takamatsu sensei. Later, Kimura sensei would build a dojo for his teacher and introduces Takamatsu Sensei to his important friend, Akimoto Fumio. At this point, it's important to share some details about Takamatsu Sensei's marriage. As I reported before, Takamatsu Sensei came back to Japan from China in 1919. In that same year, Takamatsu met fell in love with, and immediately married Miss Tane Ono. There is a Japanese saying, Horata yamai ni kuzure nashi. There is no medicine for falling in love. With her, Takamatsu Sensei must have recognized Itai Doushin, which means two different bodies, but possessing the same heart. For the record, Tane Takamatsu's early life was very hard. She was the oldest daughter of a very large family, having nine brothers and one sister. As a child, as was the manner of the day, she only attended four years of elementary school before starting work. Her first job was as a maid in a merchant's house. With this meager income, she still put aside as much money as she could and sent that back to her family as support each year. While working at that home, her elegant and graceful demeanor caught the attention of a scout from the Geisha district of Kyoto. This led to her training as a Michael, apprentice level geisha. And she eventually rose to the highest level of geigi, also called geiko. This meant that she definitely studied rigorously and eventually became an expert in traditional Japanese dance, singing, and playing the shamisen. By the way, she was also reported to be a very beautiful woman. At the time, both Takamatsu Sensei and his wife were still young, especially by today's standards. In any case, his father was not at all happy to hear the news. The elder, Yasuburo Takamatsu, went so far as to kick his son out of the family mansion, then ordered him to become a monk. Takamatsu Sensei's father's word was law and he could not go against it. So, for the next three years, the younger Takamatsu surrendered and did intense spiritual training at Hie Mountain Monastery. Takamatsu Sensei becomes a priest. After experiencing many deep lessons 
and enduring great spiritual hardships, Takamatsu Sensei finally graduated. Some years later, Takamatsu was given a small temple to personally oversee. The temple was called Chu Senji. From that tiny building, the master helped many people and became revered as a saintly spiritual teacher and an incredibly gifted healer. The following is a quote from Takamatsu Sensei about religion. The present man can be gifted with true vision of light. He can throw off limited dogmatism and egoism. Always, he takes steps to open out more. On the true path of religion, for the honest believers, the names or whatever, doesn't matter. Everyone is seen as a fellow traveler on the way. We see a lot of those two-faced ministers of whatever philosophy who speak eloquently of the truth and righteousness, but inside they don't believe it at all or practice what they preach. Any person who is a true believer, regardless if they are Christian, Buddhist, or whatever, and who has an open spirit with a light surrounding their heart, is truly of another world. Grandmaster Takamatsu Tochitsugu Sensei. Showa, year 24, the 3rd of April, 1949. Back to the timeline. In 1920, Takamatsu Sensei makes copies of important Kuki family scrolls by his own hand. In 1938, Takamatsu Sensei grants Kimura Sensei Min Kyokaiden for Kukishin Rubojutsu. And Jujutsu. Original Kuki clan scrolls are destroyed during World War II. Kimura Masaji Sensei. Kimura Masaji Sensei was born Meiji, year 34, 1901, and passed away in Heisei 12, the year 2000 at the age of 99 years old. This is a picture of Tanamura Sensei and Kimura Sensei at the grave of Takamatsu Sensei. At the age of 17, he joined the dojo of Takamatsu, who at this time was teaching Jujutsu of the Takagi Yoshin lineage and the famous Kukishinru Ojutsu. Takamatsu had only three rules for his students at this time. No liquor, no smoking, and no fighting. Living close by, Kimura was able to train almost every day with Takamatsu. It is possible that no other student of Takamatsu has had as much training with the Grand Master. During these early years, Kimura would often spar, reality training, with Takamatsu. At the age of 36, Kimura received from Takamatsu Minkyo Kaiden in Jujutsu and Bojutsu. In 1991, Shoto Tanamura met Kimura and became his student and was given all Minkyo Kaiden. <laughs> In 1995, Tanamura Soke gave me the great honor of taking me to meet 
Kim Morrison say personally. With my own eyes, I witnessed how even in his 90s, Kim Morrison say was still able to throw Soke Tanamura effortlessly. I'm convinced that everything that Soke has written about Kim Morrison say is true. After World War II, in 1949, Takamatsu Sensei presented new copies of the scrolls which were destroyed to the Kuki family. In 1952, Takamatsu Sensei grants Sato Sensei Minkyo Kaiden for Takagi Yoshinru. and Kuki Shinru. Sadly, in 1962, one of Takamatsu Sensei's most accomplished students, Akimoto Fumio, passes away. In 1963, Takamatsu Sensei grants Sato Kimbi Sensei Minkyo Kaiden for Gikanru Kopojitsu. Sato Kimbe Sensei was born. Taisho, year 14, 1925, and passed away in Heisei, 11, 1999. Of the students who joined after World War II, Sato Kimbi Sensei was Takamatsu Sensei's most senior. This is a scroll from Kukishinru Ojitsu. Tanamura Sensei met Sato Kimbi Sensei when he was in the university, but Tanamura Sensei didn't know until 20 years later that Sato Sensei learned from Takamatsu Sensei and he received the Soke ship Minkyo Kaiden of a number of licenses in addition to Gikandru Kopujitsu Minkyo Kaiden license from Takamatsu Sensei. Over the years, Sato Kenbi Sensei earned Minkyo Kaiden in various Japanese arts including Daitoru, Takitoru, Araki Shinru, Yagishin Gandru, Asiyama Ichidinru, Itin Ryoshin Chukairu, and Tenshin Koru Kempo. As a board member of the Japanese Classical Budo Federation, Ko Budo Shinkokai, Sato is recognized by the Japanese martial art community as an accomplished martial artist. He was also the president of the All Japan Chinese Kimpo Federation. Shortly after the Second World War, Sato became a student of Takamatsu. In 1957, Takamatsu awarded him Grand Masterships, Minkyo Kaiden, for Hontai Kukishinru and Hontai Takagi Yoshinru Ishitani Line. With the death of his senior student Akimoto in 1962, Takamatsu was obligated to find a new successor for the Gikanru of which Akimoto had been Grand Master. Takamatsu chose Sato Sensei to carry on the Gikandru and awarded him the title and Denshos as a new Grand Master of the Art in 1963. In 1989, Sato Sensei passed on the Grand Masterships for Hontai Takagi Yoshinru, Hontai Kukushinru, and Gikandru to his student, Grand Master Shoto Tanimura. In 1991, my sensei, Soke Shoto Tanamura, 
allowed me the great honor of meeting his sensei, Grandmaster Sato Kimbe. Like in the case of Kimura sensei, it was a one-time meeting, but still, even in that brief time, I could learn many things from seeing my teacher show respect to and interact with his sensei. Again, as a witness, I can attest to everything that Tanamura sensei has written about his great and honored teacher. In 1970, Tanamura Soke meets Takamatsu sensei. The following short message from Takamatsu sensei was first introduced in video number two of this series. Soke Tanamura received a heartwarming letter dated July 19th, 1971 from Takamatsu sensei. This was only eight months before Takamatsu sensei passed away on April 2nd, 1972. This is a partial translation of the final message sent to Soke Tanamura from Takamatsu Sensei before he passed away. I wish you the very best for the hot summer season. Sorry it has been a while. I'm pleased to hear that you are serving and working in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. First of all, I wish you well. I am fine too. Takamatsu Tochitsugu in 1972, a great star rejoined the heavens. Takamatsu Tochitsugu Sensei passed away. The final part eight of eight. Following is one of Takamatsu Sensei's highest teachings. It's about making a peaceful and successful life. Shin 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 Gun, God's Heart and God's Eyes. According to the original teachings and what I've learned from Soke Tanamura, Shin Shin refers to the spiritual world, that world. Shin Gan refers to the physical world, this world. Written with different kanji, we have Kanjin. Kaname. Knowing the meaning of this is part one to understanding the true significance of Shin Shin Shingan. Kan refers to that which is essential. Jin, kidney, and Kaname, liver, are two vital internal organs. The linchpin that holds it all together starts with this question. What is the most important thing. For us to eventually harmonize with God's heart and see things with God's eyes, then it is necessary to humbly ask ourselves this question every day. I remember that decades ago, Tanamura Soke started preparing us for this teaching at a Gimbukan Taikai with this simple statement. People need to know what is enough. My understanding of Japanese is better these days, so I can finally say that Soke taught us a deeper version of this common phrase. Most dictionaries translate this phrase as, I am content with what I have. But this is only a surface meaning. In my opinion, Soke's English translation is much better and closer to the original. I know what enough is. Ware, I, tada, simply, taru, what is enough, or how far to go, shiru, to know. Soke's teaching allows us to consider both. We require realistic dreams to inspire our honest efforts to move forward, while at the same time, we also need to persevere with patience in our present circumstances. Similarly, Tanamura Sensei also teaches that we can die any day. Therefore, it's necessary to see all points of view, past, present, and future, in order to live a balanced life with Shin Shin Shingan. Kao Jou 
Chiku se. One must have a flower's heart and honesty. Your heart must be clean cut and straight, like a blade that cuts through a bamboo stalk. This is a picture of Soke Tanamura at the age of 21, just before cutting through a bamboo stalk on Japanese television. Allow your heart to grow the power to solve all of life's problems. Do not rely on your head alone. If you are ridiculed or humiliated, don't allow it to move your heart. Laugh it off instead. It is this type of heart which contains the truly strong spirit of Nen, which is comprised of patience and perseverance. This verse from Takamatsu Sensei begins with the character Nen, Shinobu, Fortitude. Kajou Waraku. Ka means flower, or that which is beautiful and lovely. Jo is feeling and understanding with the heart the way things really are. Wa is harmony, or to make more peaceful. And Raku is enjoyment, delightful happiness. Of course, speaking about the compassionate side is where we must start. But still, we are martial artists. So there's always a wise sense of self-protection that needs consideration too. Don't become homeless, helping the homeless. Tanamur Soke. People often say that we should bring relief to those who suffer and stand up against those who oppress others and knock them down. However, we must also be cautious of the weak, never relax in their presence, for at times they themselves turn into oppressors. Heaven and Nimpo Buge will assist those who walk the path with proper intentions and sincere hearts. They will then possess the perfect life, Kajo Waraku. Be not one who seeks battles. If you wish to use this martial art, it should be for the good of those in need, those who are truly both good and honest. According to what I've learned from my teacher, Kanjin Kaname gives us the proper perspective. Kajo Chikuse gives us sincere compassion. And Kajo Waraku gives us peaceful contentment. Soke wrote, To attain this type of heart, a good command of both philosophy and the martial arts in true balance is of the utmost importance. Once attained, the warrior will then be a true servant of Bufu, the wind of martial arts. My hope is that all of you can use and integrate all three parts of Soke's teaching about Shin Shin Shingan to create a better life for you and your families. In the Niniku Seishin, it states, Icho kuni no tame to ka gi no tame ni. For the sake of one's country and for the sake of justice. This statement also extends to society in general and your family specifically, especially when we are supposed to be examples for the next generation. This kanji, tame, used in the Niku Seishin means for the sake of tame ni. Although voiced differently, it is also the original kanji in the Japanese verb representing to do, suru. These identical kanji roots show that the idea of having a humble heart is present in what we say to our training partners 
in every Gimbukan class. Even though this kanji part is rarely written, hiragana only, the deep meaning should still remain. Realize that we are making serious requests of our teacher's time and of our partner's bodies to assist us in our training. So we must humble ourselves in order to be in the correct state of mind to learn and clean up our egoism. In the case of traditional martial arts, to make a request is to humble ourselves. Keeping this in mind, I'd like to directly answer the question I raised at the very beginning of this video, though I think it should already be abundant and clear by now. To my knowledge, and more than any other person alive today, Grandmaster Shoto Tanamura is a successor of the most of Takamatsu Sensei's legendary teachings and martial arts legacy. In other videos on my channel, I've already gone into great detail about how Tanamura Sensei has received every dimension of Takamatsu Sensei's experiences through his most senior student masters. So, if you need further proof, please refer to those also. Here are just some of the Takamatsu line grandmasters whose teachings Soke has received. Kimura Musaji Sensei, Sato Kimbei Sensei, Fukumoto Yoshio Sensei, Ueno Takashi Chosui Sensei, and others. Conclusion In conclusion, I'd like to briefly share how to use the inspiration of all of these stories and teachings in the simplest and most direct way I know how. Let's start with this quote from Soke. Establish yourself. That is first. Like the Jiga Ninriki training Takamatsu Sensei endured in video number one of this series, we all need to develop strong faith to keep going and the skills to back it up. Becoming a member of the Gimbukan and training in an official dojo are the first steps. In the end, whether or not you'll be successful all depends on the reasons why you wish to study our traditions in the first place. True martial arts all have an important moral component. Defending yourself is really about the triumph of right over wrong. It's not like a sporting contest. Simply put, if what you are doing is the morally right thing done in the correct way, then the laws of nature are on your side. This rule also applies when it comes to your relationship with your teacher. Healthy and long-lasting student-teacher relationships in our art creates a spiritual bond. If both parties stay true to the timeless virtues and principles already discussed in this video series, these of course are based upon mutual respect and deep loyalty. Only then does a heart-to-heart -heart connection have the potential to last beyond the ordinary. Whether you personally believe it or not, seeking to harmonize the body, mind, and spirit in this way is one of the primary reasons that millions of people start studying traditional martial arts in the first place. To those people, I can report from my personal experience that training in these unique techniques with the proper heart has the capacity to transcend the physical realm. I will end this four video series with Soke Tanamura's words. The realization of the oneness of spirit and matter is something that I wish each one of you will come to through Budo or Shorts. Along with this, you should also find a way 
to understand your purpose as a human being. After that, try to fulfill your life by practicing what you've realized. I will hope and pray that you receive my kokoro, heart, directly and firmly, so that we can walk together towards a brighter future. Grandmaster Shoto Tanemura. I'll see you in the next video.